We are hosting a Celica meet at the Great Mall. All makes and models are welcome. It's going to be hosted at the Great Mall parking structure at the top floor. See you guys there in two weeks. What's up everyone, this is Too Slow, aka Seabass, and today is my last day as an hourly express lube tech. Um, it feels great. It's I've been wanting this position for the longest time, the position being a flat rate line technician. So I get to do the bigger jobs like um, engine removals, uh, diagnostic work, just stuff that doesn't involve me always doing an oil change every day. So. It kind of got a little annoying, but I was telling myself it's worth it. Give it a like, give a little, give it a little bit more time because what ended up happening, and not to bore you guys, because it, it's a really long story. So I started working around 2018. I worked for about I want to say two years or so, two and a half, two years, and then COVID came around, and I lost my job because of COVID. So I had a, like about a half a year absence and then um, I was able to get my job back. So I came back and then my boss at the time, um, he ended up leaving. So we didn't have a boss for like, I don't know, a couple of months. I forgot how long it was, but we didn't have a boss. So then our new boss comes in and it's like, okay, well I gotta start all over with showing this new boss that I'm a good worker, that I, I got what it takes. And so then this boss also decided to go to a different dealership. So I kind of had like a year and a half of like, not, I don't want to say like a loss, but like I, I really had no one to show that I can do this and that I, I'm a hard worker. So that's why it kind of took me a little bit longer. So this is going to be my fourth year, if I'm not mistaken. This month makes me here at Honda for four years. So uh it took a while but as i said it probably would have been it probably would have came a lot sooner but the whole um situation of changing bosses i'm already on my third boss since i started working here so you can kind of see like the the movement we went through and then and then also i forgot about this i believe it was last year our comp our company got bought out so then again it's like you have all these things going on so it's like they're more focused on these other things going on rather than promoting a, a tech, a lube tech to a line tech. So um, that's pretty much what happened. And I can talk about my whole dealership experience here at Honda, but this video is mainly just me showing you guys my last day as a express tech. What is it that I do? I've already made a video and showed you guys the tools I use and so I kind of want to give you guys an idea what to do so that you get noticed and just give it your best so that you can get the position you want and start making in some real money. So um, I got here a little bit early, so I'm just enjoying my, my coffee here and got about half an hour to wait before I go clock in. So I'll catch you guys later. I don't want to record too too much but basically this is what a work order looks like it pretty much tells you what service is next i got a b1 right here which is pretty much an oil change and a tire rotation i just went ahead and loosened up my oil filter and my drain bolt so i come over here drain bolt oil filter they're loose already you can see loose and now i'm gonna get my oil drum and just drain it out while that's draining out Ooh. While that's raining out, I'm gonna go ahead and do the tire rotation, my inspection, so that it drains out completely and I'm able to move on, um, write down my notes, put them in the computer, and go from there.
already went ahead and measured my brakes. You want to go ahead and measure the outside and the inside as well because sometimes calipers may stick so you might um, have a defective caliper. And then we also go ahead and check to see if we have any other defects or any other stuff that we might know down like this right here. There's an oil seepage coming from between the engine and the transmission. This being a higher mileage vehicle, that leads me to believe that's gonna be the rear main seal. But I would have to ask for more diagnostic time for that. Plus that is not my job as an express tech to work on this. So I'm just gonna note down on my notes, oil seepage between engine and transmission and go from there. That's the customer's decision if they want to invest um, diagnostic time so that we can go further and investigate where the oil leak is coming from. But Right now, I'm doing my brake inspection. I'm gonna do my tire rotation right now. I do rotations front and back, not crisscross. I don't know if I was confusing you guys, but let me go ahead and finish up, set the tire pressure as well, and go from there. So now I go ahead and put oil. We have 020 on the left, 520 on the right, and this vehicle takes 520, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my gun right here reset it and then i'm gonna go ahead and put 4.4 which is what this um k24 usually takes and while i'm doing the oil, when i'm done doing the oil fill i usually check my air filter my brake fluid do my battery test top off all my fluids like the power steering and the the windshield fluid windshield nozzle i don't know what you want to call it <laughs> and just go over make sure there's no rodent damage there's none of that kind of stuff um visual inspection time we just turn on the car i back it up a little bit because i'm gonna come in here and check my cabin air filter so i gotta clear the door from hitting the post and right now i'm just gonna go ahead and reset my oil light usually some vehicles have also a tpms button where you press to reset but I believe this is one of those vehicles that um, resets itself or it checks itself when it goes driving. So it's one of those that has the battery on the, on the wheel itself, the TPMS. So there we go, 100%. And right now I'm just gonna um, charge, let the battery charge for a little bit with the lights on. So I turn on the lights and I'm gonna go get my battery tester and test the battery, make sure it's um, outputting or its performance is still pretty good. If not, then we're gonna go ahead and recommend one. So our battery tested good. Battery tested good. I'm gonna go ahead and staple it to the work order and into my, input my information on the computer. So these are the important stuff that I know down. My brakes, fronts are at seven, rears are at six. Tire PSI 33 in the front, 33 in the rear, and tires themselves. Um, seven 30 seconds, all four corners, and DPT is drain plug torque. So now I'm gonna go ahead and input my information on the computer. I don't wanna show any of this information because this is very sensitive information and I'm not trying to get fired for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my information. So I can probably show you guys this, this kind of stuff because there's no sensitive information, but if I wanna say that my engine filter is dirty or if it fails, I'll just go right here and then I'll go ahead and put dirty, replace it soon, and then that pay, that charges um, two tenths. So then we go ahead and put save changes, and then we go down the list. This is where we're gonna put our brakes, fronts, rears, all our tire measurements, um, and so forth. So anytime we remove the wheels, we have to go road test the vehicle five miles, which is a loop around the freeway. Um, and then when we get back, we write down our out mileage on the RO and then we turn it in. So let's go on a road test. Obviously I can't record it since you can't hold the phone while you're driving. <laughs> so every now and then I'll get thrown something like this, like a please install tow hitch with no wire harness. This is actually pretty easy. I've already done over a dozen of these, so nothing too special. And we also got a B1 service, oil change and tire rotation, but I just got back from lunch, um, went to Popeye's, Clayton's favorite place, and this is about how many oil changes I did. So I did six oil changes um, within my first um, couple of hours here before lunch. So here's our tow hitch. 
I have to go ahead and remove the rear bumper because the crash bar that attaches itself throughout the whole bumper that needs to be removed in order to slide this in and I believe this replaces the crash bar if I'm not mistaken I haven't done this one in a long time but we'll see what happens so we're gonna have installed it there you have it it's tucked away on the back So it's already been a whole week of being a flat rate technician at Honda and boy oh boy the jobs are a lot harder than Express Tech. Um, in just the span of Thursday and Friday I managed to get myself a CVT transmission replacement on a 2011 Civic, I believe it's a 1.8 and I also got myself a dashboard removal on a 2022 Odyssey basically when they change the modes on the vents the door that controls that starts um i guess fluttering it starts hitting the plastic and so i guess there's a defect on that so i have to rip out the dashboard and replace the hvac box where the heater core sits in so i can't say no um but my shop foreman did say he will help me out so can't be too bad but i don't think i was able to clock over 40 hours um i think i only did about 38 or 37 um because there's gonna be a few ro's that i wasn't able to close out or i didn't get to close out so um hopefully next week is a lot better um but other than that um at least coming into work it's now a, a new experience because you're not gonna know what you're gonna get. It's not just gonna be oil changes. I think I did less oil changes than, than I was as an express tech, that's obvious, so. But anyways, um, probably shouldn't be recording because I'm driving, but I just wanna let you guys know and I wanted to make a conclusion for this video. Um, I will be making another video on my first week as a flat rate technician and let you guys know the experiences on that. But if you guys do have any questions, on how to become a uh, hourly technician or how to get a position as an hourly technician send me some comments let me know if you guys want me to make a video of interview questions what is it that they're looking for etc etc i believe these type of videos interest some of you guys um then there's all the haters out there i got a lot of haters just from the two videos the the two um shorts i did the the drain plug torque video and i believe the work smarter not harder because i don't know why people get triggered it's it's really funny like i don't care if they get triggered but it, it's just funny how easily the internet gets triggered and then next thing you know your video becomes semi-viral with almost 800,000 views <laughs> let's get them to a million guys <laughs> anyways um thank you guys for watching please follow me on this journey and let's see where it goes from now see you guys